and move the holes around about an inch and a quarter as we've done on this wishbone. So you can see there as we put these two together that if you wanted some more height then you could just cut that slot out and move the shock absorber hole further in. They haven't yet um, fixed the, the gearbox top in permanently yet, but we can see that the gear stick, when we change into from first to second, is going to knock uh, on that side. So what it really means is you've got to take a little bite at the back of the uh, tunnel top in order to um, clear the gear stick. And on the same subject, if we were going to use the original Ford Sierra instruments for budget, then we would have to cut a little hole in the side of the tunnel to get the speedo cable through. Remember these speedo cables aren't very sympathetic and they don't go around sharp corners. So ideally you will bring that speedo cable out through a hole in the um, side of the gearbox and then it will pass underneath the driver's legs under, under the, the back of his um, calves and then along the side of the car and then a big loop coming into the back of the uh, speedometer but I think in this case we're going to fit new electronic instruments into this so therefore we won't be concerned with the speedometer um, the speedometer uh, drive but you may need just to put a two pence piece um, in the place where the uh, speedo goes and put the circuit back on just to keep the oil and grease and dirt out of that hole. We now come to put the, um, the scuttle on. Now, um, not for keeps, but put it on pretty permanent. And we're going to fit that with the small um, hexagon head self-tapping box. But probably at a later date, very, very permanently, we'll bolt that on with nuts, bolts and washers. We need to put a support in for the steering column and this is a temporary permanent um, support because you still need an additional one in the middle of the column. But so that you can get the column in the right position, this is a Ford Sierra column, you need this U-bolt that we will give you. Basically that U-bolt needs to go directly in line um, in between the two instruments. So if you draw a line in between the centre of the two main instruments Assuming that you are going to use um, the instruments in front of you, if you're not, you'll have to look behind the dashboard to get it from behind. So we take a centre line there, and then 40 mil, 40 mil up from that face there is where the holes are going to go. So if you just put the the bolt like that, 40 mil up, then you can see that you need to mark it there and there and drill a 13 mil hole and then that U-bolt will go through the dashboard and we put some space of washers behind it and that will lift the steering column up to the highest possible position underneath the dash. If you want you may want to just cheat a little bit and bend that in slightly to get it a little bit higher but that will support it while you put the intermediate middle bracket on. So that's that, we'll put, the, um, we'll put the, the scuttle in position and then after that we'll fit the, um, the battery tray which is just an extension to this, this scuttle. You may just want to make a little cut out of that, don't take too much out of it um, as it will weaken it. You, to get the maximum height you may want to just take a little bit out of it like that. Well, let have put the scuttle on now, and you'll see they've also put the top um, tunnel top panel in. That's the triangular shaped panel that goes in front of the gear stick panel. And the time now is correct to put in the battery tray panel. Um, we keep putting off doing this, but it's got to go in sooner or later. And we do know that this panel is a very tight fit, in fact the Pinto engine is a tight fit. Some of you that's fitted Duratec engines and um, Z-Tec engines will have to modify this panel, but in the form that we've given it you, it will go in the car 
um, unmodified, and as I say, very tight. Um, we've had it in before, so basically we put this panel in now like that, and we've really got to just force it in. We've measured it, and it does measure up that it all will go in. So we've just bent that a little bit like that and snapped in position. And really, even when we pull that up tight there with rivets in a minute, it is making that engine very tight against there. There is a gap there, a sufficient gap. Uh, it's a gap of around um, three eighths of an inch. So we will make sure that when we fasten this in for good now, that we'll put something behind the engine and prise that as far back as we can in order to give it room there. With it, this engine can't afford to touch anything, so we will have to make sure that gap's left there. So the lads now will put something in there, a little bit of timber or something, they'll force that back and they'll fasten in this battery tray panel now. To uh, further explain the um, battery tray, uh, we did say that we're going to rivet this in position, but we've had a, a better idea that we're going to just fit some temporary screws again. You mean think you might want to adjust this battery tray or it might want to come back out again for some reason so we're just going to put the packer there which it explained earlier I'm going to push it back in to position and just put a couple of fastening screws in there against the uh, other thing. Once you have that's in position, you can uh, go on to your next stage. Just now I'm explaining the pedal set that we've got. We've got the hanging bracket which bolts onto the battery tray, clutch, brake, accelerator, six bushes and an inner tube, your bolt and two nuts. What I'm going to do now is just give these a quick coat of spray paint. Make sure you wipe them down with thinners beforehand. I'm going to give them some red primer and then spray them black. We're coming now to a pretty um, delicate and um, important part of this video and that is putting the steering column and the steering shaft in and at the same time putting the pedals in. Remember that this will vary from um, application to application and we are doing this with a Pinto engine. If you've got a, a different engine, a Duratec, a Vauxhall engine, a Z-Tech engine a Kent engine then everything will be different because you'll have to get the, the steering shaft on a different route past the alternator and past the manifold and past the engine mounts. So we've chosen a relatively simple route simply because the, you, you, Michael's bought the manifold from Robin Hood so we know that's made and that will go um, past the um, steering shaft okay. Um, remember it's quite important that you do do this operation all in one go so that you, you know what you're up against before you start. Um, there are certain little bits and pieces I'm going to produce now that you don't get in the kit, that you've either got to make yourself or buy yourself or, or buy from other sports cars. And um, we've already established that the steering column is one from a Ford Sierra. And we've also got to bear in mind that this steering column is going to go in your lightweight at an angle which is something like this and we can see on the steering shaft there the remnants of an old steering column bush from the Ford Sierra with a pressed out spring washer 
we need to take that bush off, throw it away, but save the spring washer. If the spring washer has seen better days, then you will need to put it on a flat piece of metal and hammer it flat again to give it a new lease of life. Or you may have to go along to your Ford agent and get a new spring washer. Um, but any event, that is quite important in holding the steering column bush in place. Um, if you can't get a spring washer, then you will have to use a little jubilee clip. I put that down for a second, and in the pocket I will produce a very important steering column bush kit. This is one you can buy from your Ford agent, from your motor factor, or it's one of the best selling parts that Robin Hood sell. So this bush kit starts off with a triangular hole in a bush, an outer ring, which we can assume is a nylon type substance, that the inner the inner bush rotates inside the outer bush and then the outer bush fits into a rubber grommet like so and those of you who's taken your Ford Sierra apart will remember this or probably you've left it in the body shell but any, in any event you really do need to buy a new one because this is one of the most popular failure points for Ford Sierras and it can dramatically alter, that goes in there, then that rotates in there like that. It can dram dramatically alter the feel of driving a car if that's worn. We sell these very, very, very cheap. Um, it's worth buying. So what would happen is that that bush would go inside the, the hole that's already in your foot pattern in your Ford Sierra. We've got to bear in mind for this bush to work correctly that that bush must go onto this shaft and the bush must be at 90 degrees to the shaft. That's the triangular shaft. The bush must be held firmly in place as it's held in place on the Ford Sierra. But unfortunately, this area this isn't strong enough. So what happens is that we need to reinforce that area by putting a bracket there. And I have a bracket here in the pocket, which we made, and it's something that you can make that's got the, the hole in there, the right size for the rubber bush, and then it will fit into the um, inside the footwell of the car. Now, this is something that you could, we will supply uh, as an extra for Robin Hood. So depending on what route you're going with your steering shaft, you may need this. So what will happen is that this bracket has got the two holes drilled in it that correspond with the two holes in this pedal bracket. So what will actually happen is that we'll put this through that hole underneath here like that and that will go underneath this battery tray panel and then this will go on top like that and you're starting to get the idea we'll put 8mm um, bolts through there and bolt it all together, sandwich it up so that's what will happen with that but what I would just say is that this has been bent Ready. But in actual fact, that needs to be bent at a greater angle than what it's bent at. It's bent at slightly over 90, but it really needs to be bent at more of an angle, simply because we've already established that that steering column must go in at about that angle, and that bracket must be exactly 90 degrees to that shaft. So it can be either over 90 or under 90, depending on which way you put it round. So it can be over 90 or under 90, but what happens is it's no good having the bracket at that angle, or only at that angle, or that angle, or that angle. It must be at exactly at 90 degrees to the shaft, so that, that it will run free. 
So what happens that once we've got that bolted underneath there, and we've got the triangular shaft poking through the hole in the foot in the foot panel, we then mount the steering column into the car. So it's held at this end with the um, steering column bush bracket, and at the other end, remember we drilled those holes in the dashboard. And there is another part that you'll need for Robin Hood, which is a U-bolt. And that will go up through the column like that. And it will bolt the column underneath the dashboard and hold it as high as it'll go. At this point, I would say that this isn't sufficient to hold the, uh, the steering column. We'll still need a further bracket. So I'm going to leave these lads now to put this together. And they're also going to assemble the pedals which they'll show you assembling the pedals and they'll show you the sequence of putting the bushes which are the same bushes we use in the front suspension putting those together and then putting them the whole lot through this hole so they hang down either side of the uh, steering column obviously leaving room on the right hand side for the accelerator pedal one thing is that hopefully they'll show you this, that these pedals were designed for possibly, obviously, a hydraulic master cylinder for the brakes, but also for the provision for a hydraulic clutch. Now, the, the clutch on a Duratec engine um, is, is hydraulic, so that was why we've made it for a twin hydraulic system. In actual fact, um, the Type 9 gearbox uses a, a, a manual, a cable clutch. So what will happen, we'll have to supplement that with another angle bracket that we'll drill a hole in to act as a stop for the cable. So we'll drill a hole in it, the same as a hole that's in your Ford Sierra bulkhead, so that the end of the manual uh, cable for the clutch will have a stop. So that will supplement that bracket and that will bolt on. Coming again to uh, further explain your pedals to you, and you're going to take your some of your black neoprene bushes and insert them again into your holes here, into your tube here. Take your hammer, just tap it in. Lovely. Again, if they will tap in, then you. You are safe to tap these in. If you find they're a bit too tight, then you can uh, do the same process as you remember before with your wish that you did with your wishbones, opening your vise, getting a couple of flat strips of material, and just uh, squeeze them in gently. But these ones are going in quite easily. And just feel for any bits you may. Uh, to rub off, rub them off with the fire. So you need to put these bushes in both the mounting bracket and your two clutch and brake pedals. Which will go through there. 
Je lance ta tête. Et then on pedal. The ex the brake and the clutch pedal are exactly the same, so you can't get them mixed up, so you can pick either one up. Squeeze that onto the tube. Just tap it in. This way round with the this face here. Then need to uh, mark the hole holes on to the uh, battery, tray. Uh, battery tray. It's slightly later date after first we need to put the other pedal in that Michael. It can be quite tricky this to get into position. that through there. So then what you need to do is to decide exactly where you, you'd like your pedals to be in your car. Obviously you need to be looking to get your drive driving car, your steering column sorry down the centre of your two pedals here. This is through your oval in your foot panel, football panel. And once you've got that in position, you can then mark your holes onto your uh, battery tray and drill that out with the corresponding size hole here, which is 10mm uh, I believe. We've already done that. So once you've drilled those holes, you pull that forward. You can see the two holes here. Next we want the uh, bracket that you've made to pick up the clutch cable and the accelerator cable which will go there. You need to mark those two holes that you've drilled through the battery tray and drill them through this panel so that it can pick up all these holes together. Which we've already done. So we can put that into position there. And now we can go that. Just push it bolt in temporarily. 10 millimeter bolt. And then underneath you need to put your steering bush bracket with the bush already in behind the, the two pedals so that's going to go behind the two pedals up under there corresponding to the hole remember you've already bent that bush uh, bracket to the angle that you require for the slope of the steering column. Need to follow the hole. Oh yeah. So uh, we now can uh, put in the steering column, but you may have to adjust the adjust the hole with a file, the hole that you've got in the. Uh, Footwell panel there. You may have to raise that up or down depending on exactly where you want to position, exactly where you want to position your steering there. shaft. So as you can see, we have slightly altered the hole with far that out. And the reason we've done this is because you need your steering shaft to sit in a nice place. As you can see, I've lined that up with that hole, and you need the shaft to miss the engine mount in there, and also to miss your alternator as well, and that, so you've got a nice uh, space in between both. And once you're happy that you've got a nice gap there, uh, you can then decide exactly where you would want your hole to be here. And once you've done that, you then line your bush bracket up with the uh, plastic 
all in there. You may have to alter that uh, bracket slightly just to get it to sit exactly where you want it. And once you've done all that, then obviously you put your bush bracket back on and you alter that hole to suit. And that can now all be bolted together. So now we've got all three brackets sandwiched there together. We've got the steering column bush bracket underneath at the back of the pedals, making sure that your pedals are going to miss that bracket and they don't catch anyway. Once you're happy that you've got everything in the position that you want it to be in, you can then bolt it all together. Now we move on to the accelerator pedal. Which is here. Now when you receive this accelerator pedal, it is going to be straight, like this. Straight. You may find when you put it into position, that it will sit very close to your brake uh, pedal. So what you need to do is to put two marks on on your pedal, one around here, one around here. You'll obviously find that, find the marks corresponding to the uh, side panel here, this mark here. And then you'll bend that pedal into that sort of shape. And this will move the uh, accelerator pedal away from your brake pedal. And then that, once you've done that, you simply put that in your vice and just move it around and knock it with a hammer and then back again. And now we can put that into position. And put through your rod. We then have another bracket here. Wash. Oh, sorry, yeah, you will want to probably wash it between your brake pedal. You'll want to wash it between the uh, brake pedal and the accelerator pedal. And, and another one there. And then we'll come with the bracket. Put that into position there. Now, when you put this bracket on, it is, uh, it is quite critical that you have it as close to the cutout there as possible, as far away from the edge of your chassis here, this will allow your uh, bonnet to sit in position. So that's how we've uh, made that there. You can drill a couple of probably three and a half millimeter holes, and we're just going to tie that down with a couple of hexagon heads, uh, self tapping screws. The same that we've used in the uh, scuttle. Just right, we're now going to uh, attempt to fix the steering column in. We need a certain few things to do this. One of the things you need is a bracket, which we've got, which, are, which we've made like this. This is going to sit under there and pick up the uh, steering column with two large bolts. And this is something that you probably will receive in your kits at a later date when we've uh, perfected it. We also need 
the U bolt with the uh, 10mm nuts and washers to uh, bolt up through the scuttle and the main bit you need the steering column which will now just there for now with your locking washer on the shaft yeah, as you can see there right then if you can see down there there's the uh, steering bush bracket and that's where that will, will, the triangular shaft will go through. First of all, we want to put this bracket in, which goes up here, sits in there, onto there like so, with the brackets. Angle, that angle there, and that angle there, set on either side. Shove that as far forward as we can so that it's nice and tight, because that's on uh, an angle, and so is this side. So now we can shove the steering column in. At the same time, I'm going to go to the front and feed it into the uh, 